What's good everybody and welcome back to the channel for the first video in a new, I don't know what to call it, series, because it's not a series or anything, but a new thing I'm introducing onto the channel called One Off Wednesday, part of a brand new release schedule that I have started with this week. Not sure how many of you may have noticed, but typically in weeks past I have been releasing my Expansion Draft Only Bulls franchise on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. Saints on Tuesdays and Thursdays and we started this week a little bit different with a Saints on Monday and a Bulls on Tuesday and that's because I'm introducing a brand new release schedule as seen here um, where I am now releasing I'm planning to release Saints videos on Mondays and Fridays and then Bulls will be Tuesday Thursday Saturday leaving the Wednesday slot open for something I want to call one off Wednesday where I will be doing as it is described a lot of one off videos whether that be challenge rebuilds like a zero overall rebuild that could be tips and tricks on things on like how I attack the draft things like that um so if you have any ideas of what would be good one off videos uh let me know your thoughts in the comments as I could certainly use some ideas right now. I have a few that I already know that I want to try out, but um, and then if I don't have really any one-off Wednesday idea to, or maybe I have an idea, but it's not ready to release on a Wednesday, that will be filled with a Saints episode instead. But of course the first one-off Wednesday I'm doing isn't exactly a one-off Wednesday, but rather a finale to a series that really brought a lot of people to the channel, one that I was having a ton of fun with until it was corrupted by Madden. Um, again, a, a thing that I've talked a lot about on the channel, but I haven't exactly, exactly visualized it, so let's get into that now. Taking a look here at my franchise files, you'll see the one on the very far right, one that I have not accessed since December 28th at 6.51 p.m. my time. Um, yes, this says Bulls and not Express, but that's because, as I had explained in episode 50, if we went undefeated and won the Super Bowl in that series, I was planning on relocating a team within the division, and that's exactly what I did. I relocated the Denver Broncos, you know, sold our best players to the Chiefs and the Chargers to make them better, simulated that next season. Uh, I had my last offseason with the Express. It was really crazy. I did a lot of things to set the Express up for future success since I wouldn't be handling the team anymore. Um, yada, yada, yada. But eventually I got to the point where I was ready to draft my first draft with the Bulls, the team that we have been playing with now. And I was preparing for that draft when my franchise file was corrupted. As you see here, I click on this file. The league is temporarily unavailable. It has been temporarily unavailable since December 28th. Um, Madden released. I might I might put up the link here for a screenshot or whatever. A statement saying that there was... Uh, that the franchise saves were corrupted. And they estimated that, you know, more than half of the franchises would be permanently corrupted and unrecoverable. And so, luckily, I had some, you know, pre-recorded episodes all the way up to that Super Bowl that I could release throughout the week when they promised an update. That update never came. And so, thus began 
the Brooklyn Bulls franchise as you know it today. I think it's time to finally delete this file. Um, ignore these two files here. These are files that uh, may be future one-off Wednesday videos, but as you see here, we have an owner with the Raiders franchise file. As I have successfully recreated the San Antonio Express in a different save file. Of course, for season one, we will be the Raiders, but I'm playing owner mode. I will relocate us to the San Antonio Express. So year two and onward will be with the San Antonio Express, of course. Um, and I have some notes on basically the start of this that I just want to share with you. How did I do this? How did I recreate these people? Well, I went through a lot of the the episodes from season five, our final season with the Express, and I found when I would upgrade these players, typically when I upgrade a player, you know, I'll get the upgrade, I'll see the upgrades, then I'll tab over to their skills to see where, you know, the upgrade leaves their skills. And that gave me what their most recent skill set was, right? And so for the majority of these players, that is what I have done. Um, everybody, let's just take a look at Brandon Nash here, is the correct age, has, from what I can tell, the correct face scan and equipment. I don't know a lot of their shoes, unless they had the got the gold shoes for getting 99 overall. Everyone has the same college. A couple of, of exceptions to this is there's a couple of face scans that Madden can generate, but if you go in and put that exact same face scan on a player, it, it spits out a different face. So Cedric Gallimore is a different face. I think he has now has the same face as uh, Michael Franklin. And then Jacob Leach has a different face. Those are faces that, like if you do, I don't know, skin tone two, face six, Madden can generate a different face, but when you select that face, it's a different face. So uh, just faces that you can't put on a creative player. Everyone's age is correct. Um, not everyone's experience is correct. Uh, unfortunately, you can't edit a player's experience if you accidentally forget to edit their experience when you create them. You can't go back. So it looks like, like Timmy Reed should be 26. That is correct. But he should not be a rookie. So unfortunately, some players that should not be up for rookie of the year will be. We might get a rookie of the year from like a fifth year vet. Uh, here in year one, but seeing as how that was just like a one-year problem, they'd get maybe one skill boost if they win rookie of the year. I didn't see it as too much of a problem. So you might see like Lewis Smart. There's only like a couple players throughout the roster that have this problem. Didn't see it as some kind of game-breaking problem that needed to. I needed to like restart and and like recreate all these players for. Another thing that I did with 100% accuracy with one minor exception, is contracts. Let's take Lewis Smart here for an example. Uh, how I recreated these is I went through all the episodes where I resigned somebody and I gave them the exact same contract. For a guy like Lewis Smart, we gave him a seven year, $100 million deal. He would be in the second year of that, so he has six years remaining. And as you can see, the last two years are at a reduced cap because the signing bonus is no longer there. They'll have the exact same contracts that they had. The one exception to this is people who are still on rookie year deals. They don't have like the right, right cap numbers. As we'll see here with Brandon Nash, he was the number one overall pick. Those are obviously not number one overall pick numbers, but he does have the correct years remaining. Um, I didn't know what the rookie wage scale was, and I didn't think it was all that important as, you know, they were cheap anyway. Uh, for the first round rookies, I did make their years remaining as if I were to pick up the fifth year option. Of course, the fifth year option is a little bit more expensive. So that's kind of the one exception where like fifth year options are going to be really cheap here where they're not really that cheap in real life. Um, I didn't know what the fifth year option numbers were and I didn't see it as all that game breaking. The point is people who have not signed their big second contract will be up for re-signing in the correct year. So for example, Kavon Simmons is somebody that we need to come and sign to a contract this year, figure out how much we're gonna be paying to a running back that is incredible. 
I think that's all the notes I have in terms of, I guess one more note is I didn't bring back Luis Sanchez. So this is as the ages and everything is as if we were going into year six of the franchise. And I knew we weren't bringing him back Luis Sanchez, so I didn't bring him back here. Of course, a lot of the back, backups are Oakland Raiders, or sorry, Las Vegas Raiders as well. They haven't been Oakland for a little bit. So basically, until their contracts run out, we're going to keep them. For this franchise, since it, we're doing it more rebuild style and not franchise long-term series style, I turned off progressive fatigue and injuries, so these players shouldn't play. Oh, I totally skipped over one big exception to the setup here. I couldn't find the exact ratings for every single player. There are some players, Jalen Turner is one of them, where I would upgrade them and then I wouldn't look over at their stats. And so I mostly had the guess. I think I ended up being a little bit lower than Jalen Turner really was, but I think I am close-ish on a lot of these players. I know Eli Shea was one of these players, Jalen Turner on offense, defensively. It was Michael Franklin, Victor Giles, Timmy Reed, and JT Bean. Those are the players that I didn't get with 100% accuracy. Everyone else has the ratings they had. Either the last upgrade they got in season five or the second to last upgrade. So some might be like one upgrade off if I somehow miss their you know last upgrade. So uh, depth traits are also the same. Now I'm done explaining the setup. Let's talk about what this French, what this video, sorry, is is going to be. It's going to be a career simulation. I'm going to simulate until everyone that was on that year five express team is retired which will probably end up being Brandon Nash being the last retired, if we're being honest. So probably basically a career simulation of Brandon Nash. Uh, what I'm going to be doing off camera is I'm going to be going in and quick simming, but like in the game, like we did during the Express and how we do in our all of our franchises when we sim a game, is just going, in, going into Super Sim. The reason I'm doing it that way is because you can actually use custom playbooks that way. If you just go in you know, advanced week from here, you don't get to use a custom playbook. And I do want to use the custom playbook that we use with the San Antonio Express. Uh, it ended up being really successful for us, and so I want to keep that going. I'm not going to be doing that on camera. That's going to be a lot of off-camera off stuff. Um, what you're going to be seeing on camera, I will be saving all the upgrades till the end of the year, and I'll upgrade everyone once at the end of the year, and I'll show you those upgrades. Um, Maybe, depending on how long it's going to make this video, I may even have to do it in two parts if it gets too long. If there's like some incredible performances throughout the season, I'll just quickly shout them out in like the post-game stats. Um, if we make the playoffs, we will still be super simming those, but I'll hop into the sim and I will show those on camera. I'll show the playoff performances. When, I should say if, but most likely when we make the Super Bowl after this first year, because this first year it will be as the Raiders and I don't want to play these with these players in Raiders uniforms. Once we make the Super Bowl for the first time as the San Antonio Express, I will be playing the game. I think it sounds so fun to just hop on the sticks and play with Kevon Simmons one last time. Uh, Brandon Nash, all these players that... I've come to love, and I know a lot of you guys have too, George McLean. I'm so excited to rush the edge with George McLean. Have not found an edge rusher as impactful as him yet in any of my other series. And I'll be showing a condensed version of the highlights, kind of like I showed with the last episode of season two of Bulls, where I showed two games with more condensed highlights, maybe even more condensed with that. I'm thinking maybe like five to 10 minutes of highlights of the game and that way maybe if i feel like it i could even play multiple super bowls um and show them depending on how many super bowls we go to i don't know if i'll play all of them if we just keep going um so you'll see i'll show any of your stats every year and when a player retires i will show their career stats thank goodness for the stats and awards episodes that i started doing in year four of express franchise because I show everyone's career stats, right? So I, so when Brandon Nash retires, we can add all the stats that he had in this video with the two of his, his first two year stats that we showed in the, the stats and awards episode from season five. And so we'll know everyone's career stats.
And so we'll talk about them, talk about where they ended up all time, stuff like that. What I will not be doing, I'll maintain manual control over free agency because I want this to continue to be a draft only video. I will not be manually scouting and I will not be manually drafting with one exception. Every year I'll take a look at it like the top 10. If there's a really, really good looking player, I might just snag him and do the first rounds, but I won't be doing the entire drafts of every year. Uh, it's just going to take way too long to make this video if I do that. Also, if we end up losing a player just because we can't afford them, as I believe that should be a problem for us at some point in this video, I might go into the first round and draft a replacement for that player. Uh, or, you know, the second round, wherever the best value is for that position. That will probably be something I do. Just because I don't want the CPU to totally screw us over in that sense. So... That's what you'll see. Um, I'll, you know, show who we ended up drafting, whether I ended up drafting somebody or if it was all CPU. I'll, we'll show the draft picks, maybe show the highlight the draft classes in general, see where the best players were, because um, that's something I always like to do. See the best of what Madden had to offer in the draft classes. So with that being said, I think I am ready to start this video. Um, this will be just kind of be a cut up of what I decided was worthy of showing. And let's get in to season one. Let's start off season six as we probably will every season with some re-signings. First up is Kevon Simmons. Of course, he's a stud and he's only asking for 12 million dollars a year for the next seven seasons that's about as easy of a contract as i can negotiate here in a franchise like this just a quick heads up i couldn't end up getting every single one um here but uh why casanzo rejected us on a three year 69 which i thought was a pretty nice offer but we ended up getting him on that four year deal tried to get make sure every big contract that we signed was on but there were a couple that just kind of fell through the cracks that i couldn't end up finding through the footage but here at the end of season two we ended the year 15 and two and we got till week 15 before we lost for the first time to the new england patriots after that uh we lost again and then had two overtime wins so definitely not you know playing our best football going into the playoffs which is always concerning but looking at the stats for year one brandon nash 5500 yards passing and 55 passing touchdowns yeah i think that's pretty good uh 12 picks as well not terrible uh come on simmons goes for over 2000 yards rushes for 22 touchdowns as well brandon nash rushes for 400 yards and five touchdowns Hazelton will lead us in yards for the year at 1,400 yards plus. Lewis Smart gets another 1,000-yard season. 15 touchdowns for Hazelton as well is quite nice, but four 1,000-yard receivers this year. I guess that kind of happens when you have 5,500 yards. In terms of sacks lot, I think our offensive line did spectacular this year. You see a big number there. Timmy Reed had seven, 27 sacks, excuse me. Along with 26 TFLs, George McLean ends the season with 17 sacks. All four of our starting defensive linemen got into the double digits this year. They are amazing. Michael Franklin had six picks this year. Maybe finally gets up to superstar dev this year. Would be a big boost for him. And no picks for Quincy Boston, only four deflections. That's like the one position where it's going to be a lot tougher to match like the kind of impact he has just a, an elite cover corner looking here at the first season's upgrades come on simmons gets quite a few here uh all we can do is put him into a receiving back but he's gonna be a lot better receiver than he was in our franchise by the end of this george mclean here another really solid season i think um, like 17 sacks is still his career low for a season and he's gotten it. That's what he got this year. So he is definitely on a tra trajectory for being one of the all-time greats. If he can continue production like that, give him a run stopper upgrade here. But um, yeah, he's an elite player. Finesse moves up to 97 after just three years. 
Rashad Younger, of course, one of my favorite offensive linemen. Probably, uh, no, I would say uh, Brian Pearson is my favorite offensive lineman I've drafted, but uh, he's got to be either second or third, depending on what you think of Ramirez. Ramirez getting superstar off rip definitely helps him out there, but just an incredible athlete. Ratings looking really good as well after his third year. Cedric Gallimore, somebody that is somebody that we signed to a short year, short term deal. Uh, I couldn't find when we actually signed it, so couldn't show up. But it's like a two year deal. Still, somebody that I don't view as somebody I'm going to pay long term. I just wanted to not pigeonhole us into drafting a center. I still think we might draft one though. Jaron Lacey, another player. I ended up agreeing to a contract that I just couldn't find where it happened. I don't know how long this video is going to be at the end, but let's just say um, it took eight hour, more than eight hours of footage to record this. So yeah, some things can get lost. I'm sorry. Uh, Jacob Leach getting some upgrades here. Plus three zone coverage is exactly what you want to see. Just trying to get him up to 85 overall, as I don't think we're going to be able to pay Victor Giles for very long in this video. And so he's kind of the plan right now to be the second linebacker in our base like nickel package you know timmy reed gets up to 99 overall i mean doesn't get any moves there but the, that's still a pretty good upgrade there um and so already given him the gold shoes i kind of just preemptively gave some guys gold shoes that i knew were eventually going to get to 99 overall quincy boston timmy reed and george mclean being those players but um Eddie Houston, maybe he ends up Reaching 99 overall, that would be really cool. Wyatt Costanzo here. Another player that... I know we just signed him to a contract. I don't even know if we're going to be able to see the end of it, though. It honestly just depends on how things work out with the salary cap. Um, he was somebody that in my in original Express franchise, I was planning on moving on from just because he didn't want to be with the team. This time he did want to resign, so I thought... We'll just sign him for now, and if we need to trade him off later, or um, if worse co comes to worse, release him. We can always do that. Jerome Snell here gets up to 85 overall with an upgrade there. We'll also do a little bit of pass protector on him. Solid upgrades. Lewis Smart, of course. My personal favorite player I think we've had on this channel this year. Love that he can do literally anything. Quincy Boston, we'll get him up to 99 overall. Really, really good upgrade to get to 99 overall as well. Darius Connor gets a hybrid upgrade. Both coverages in the 90s, hard to do better than that. And then Michael Franklin here, as we upgraded them, I realized he already had abilities and I thought he might get them from, you know, his stats this year, but I found something that I have never seen in Madden until just now. A defensive player of the week giving superstar development. Have you guys ever seen this in Madden? A player of the week giving a development boost? Is it a bug? I, I don't care. I'm I'm happy. I've just never seen player of the week because we get a ton of player of the weeks and they don't usually result in dev ups, but I'm glad they did this time around. And then Matthew Welker, of course, the goat kicker getting plus two accuracy, which puts him at 99 for both power and accuracy. Literally can't do better. I guess with awareness, sure. But in terms of his ability to kick a ball, there's no one that has ever been better. It's impossible. Devin Walls here. It gets a speed. You love to see that. Morris Morgan will upgrade the zone here. It's that over 90 and then JT being somebody that we're trying to get to 85 overall as quickly as we can. Two overall away. Joey Vasquez, somebody that was still very young in his career when the series ended so don't know how attached i am to him being a long-term member of the team wouldn't mind you know just keep 
keeping young at these positions also with Jalen Turner really likes the player just never stayed healthy in our series I mean we do have injuries turned off but I don't know if he's going to be somebody that's going to get a second contract from us to highlight individual performances at least to start out this video I don't know if I'll do it the whole way we'll just look at any player of the weeks that we got I just think if we were to highlight all the cool performances throughout the year it would just make this video incredibly long something that I did throughout this first year but then once I realized how long I was going to make this video I just decided to stop doing it um I didn't even I mean I'm voice recording this after I've recorded all this gameplay I didn't even end up doing this much for the entirety of this video as it just got longer and longer and longer and I just couldn't handle it being any longer uh, MVP is Brandon Ash we win coach of the year as well Kavon Simmons wins offensive player of the year Timmy Reed wins defensive player of the year no surprises yet uh, we have the top three players in defensive player of the year which is awesome uh, yeah Timmy Reed's defensive rookie let's go um, luckily that's just going to be something that happens once and then Lewis Mark couldn't even get close to offensive rookie of the year unfortunately but here we are, Jerome Snell wins best offensive lineman. That should give him superstar development. And he's on a pretty key, cheap contract with us. So I'm really liking the sound of that. Uh, had the all four of our defensive linemen were top 10 best linebacker. I mean, Michael Franklin was the best off ball linebacker, but he's just not high on the list because ugh, man doesn't know what he's doing in terms of position delegation, but it's fine. Going into the divisional matchup against the Colts, they do strike first here, but um, something that you'll see as a theme in this video is we kind of own the divisional round. Um, it, it was very rare that we saw even, even a team be competitive in this video in the divisional round. It was a round that we dominated later rounds. We'll see later in the video, but... Um, it, I was just super impressed throughout how much we were able to just kind of take care of teams. Only five incompletions in the day for Nash there. Um, just overall, really good game. Only one sack allowed. Sack in the postseason for McLean. Michael Franco with a pick. He's he's racking up the interceptions. The Bills here. Uh, we got off to a quite a hot start. Going up 28 to nothing. The Bills try to make it a little bit frisky here, but eventually we will pull away in this game and we will earn a trip to the Super Bowl in year one. Of course, as I stated before, I want to play the Super Bowl because I don't want to go with this team in the Raiders uniforms. If we make the Super Bowl after this year, I will pop into those games, but. Brandon Nash, five touchdowns, you love to see it. Javon Simmons, 20 carries, 122 yards. Also added basically 100 yards and two touchdowns in the air. Big time, Javon Simmons game. A couple sacks for Timmy Reed. And next year, all, all year, we got a couple of picks as well. Overall, very nice performance. Leading us to Super Bowl, where we get to play in Arizona with our white uniforms against Tom Brady. Of course, Tampa Bay making the Super Bowl in the NFC is not even close to what really happened, but um, hey, Tom Brady's really good in the game, so I can't eat on that. But can we beat the old man here in Super Bowl 57? Of course, in our franchise, this would really be Super Bowl 62 or 3. Tampa Bay scores first, but we'll respond quickly. Uh, take the lead, our first lead at 14 to 10, but Tampa Bay is not letting go and making this easy on us at all. We end up taking the 31 24 lead coming into the second half. We really took a hold of this game. Uh, Tampa Bay did a good job keeping, keeping it close, but we do overcome them and become Super Bowl champs for the second straight year. 
course, a bunch of non-actual express people that you're seeing here because they're backups, but all the starters were San Antonio Express players, and it is weird to see them, you know, celebrating the Super Bowl in these Rangers uniforms. Hopefully we can see this once again in our true colors, the colors that we grew to love with this team, but it's nice to start off this long-term sim with a Super Bowl dub. dub. Excuse me, I don't know why I said dub. That doesn't make any sense. But Brandon Nash lifting up that Super Bowl trophy in three years. He has won MVP three times and won the Super Bowl twice. Certainly a hot start towards becoming the greatest to ever lace him up. Looking here at stats, 31 of 46, 346 yards, five touchdowns. Yeah, that's. Those are some MVP numbers for me. 20 and 94 and a touchdown for Kavon. Hazleton, really big game in the Super Bowl. So, he was somebody that even when we were playing, he was always showed up in the playoffs, getting some good performances. Nice to see that translating here in the simulation. Got some upgrades here to do after the Super Bowl. Starting here with Timmy Reed, who will just make an even stronger 99 at this race. Same thing can be said here for Kevon Simmons. At this point, I mean, you could line this boy up as slot receiver. Actually, not, not quite. He's, he's not there yet. To be fair, his uh, starting receiving back ratings were... Um, not particularly good. Who's smart? We'll just get to be an even better blocker here. Darius Connor. I just want to get that that uh, scheme fit back. Franklin, newly minted superstar, and now X Factor for his off-ball linebacker performance. He was the best middle linebacker in football this year. Victor Giles. Make him a little bit better balance here between pass block, pass uh, coverage and run stopping. And then Devin Walls will give my favorite safety upgrade, hybrid. A lot of things we could just increase by one there. Richard Younger, continue his development, make him a well-balanced player. He gets his strength, which is always nice. And then Eli Shea as a pass protector. I'm trying to hold back a sneeze. This is very uncomfortable. All right, we're good. Um, power for Jerome Snell. Just get him that scheme fit back, even though it doesn't really matter. He is up to superstar dev, as we saw momentarily there, which is awesome. Getting a lineman to superstar dev is about as good a feeling as you can get. Jacob Leach just doesn't quite look the same, of course, but uh, still... In my long-term plans, JT Bean gets a really nice upgrade there. He is very close to getting up to 85 overall. Jaron Lacey just got there, so we'll try to make him a little bit more well-balanced now, be able to both rush and stop the run. And here is a look at the squad that just won the Super Bowl. Hazleton, oh man, those gray sleeves. Oh yeah, I forgot. So the team color for Express is actually gray. You need to go to their secondary color to make things orange. That doesn't make much sense to me. Why is the primary color of this team gray? But it is very nice to see those San Antonio Express orange uniforms once again. Oh, they look so good on these players. People are, might look like slightly off. It's because they might have had different like body size types. Previously, I didn't know what they were because I didn't generate these players before. So, um, yeah, so some like bodies might look a little bit different, but for the most part, I think they all look really, really, really close, if not exactly the same as they did when they were San Antonio Express. So, I think we're in a pretty good spot. Morris Morgan here, gonna get a speed upgrade like he even needed it, but hey. 
I will never complain about a speed upgrade. We're already banking like a bunch of upgrade points for Brandon Nash. And then yeah, like winning MVP is certainly gonna help that. Mike Costanzo just got him to a four year deal. He's up to 92 overall. And all I can say is the team did not disappoint. 15 and two, almost went undefeated. That's something that's very hard to do when Madden Simulation is go undefeated. So the fact that they were close, um, up, got all the way to what was it, week 15 until they lost their first game, won out in the playoffs. For the most part, it wasn't particularly close. The Bucks kept it close. But um, really proud of this team and think I couldn't have asked for a much better start than, you know, having the three best defensive players in all of the AFC, having the MVP and the Offensive Player of the Year. It's just, um, I think this team can be very good for a very long time. How long can we keep them together with all their contract demands going to be increasing as their careers go along? We are now here in the offseason in the draft where we have the number 32 pick and I have somebody that I want to select here. I said I might do like round one of the draft occasionally. Jared Randolph, I think, is going to be a Cedric Gallimore replacement at center. Now, we don't need to replace Gad Gallimore right now. We did sign him, but um, I think a guy like Jared Randolph, as he is hidden dev, can be a long term piece, allowing us to trade Cedric Gallimore to the Bears, get a second and third round pick. I think that's a good long-term move for us. The CPU ended up taking a player that was on my board uh, later uh, in Brian Rhodes. So another hidden dev lineman. You don't hate to see it. 21 years old. He's going to come in and be a pretty good player right off the rip. Um, Jared Randolph, of course. 75 overall is quite good. Uh, lead and impact blocker there. Strengths there. Finesse needs some work, but that's what developments for we're going to try to do everything give them the mentors and all the stuff in the preseason we got a mentor wide receiver here for um jalen turner and that leads us to season seven to start off season seven let's take a look here at some resigns starting to see our cap space is quickly evaporating and so Maybe starting to see the beginning of the end with this team. Uh, one guy I know for sure I want to bring back is Richard Younger. I tried to get these players to come back on like the team-friendly deals. None of them accepted. So I ended up having to give them back the neutral offers. If everyone would have accepted the team-friendly deal, we could have brought back everybody. But it just was not feasible. Like this neutral offer, if we offer this to Richard Younger, we're, we're, we're toast in terms of cap space. Still want to do it, though. I think he's a really good lineman. He was second in offensive lineman of the year last year. So want to keep him around. We got a trench boost, only a small bonus of 2,500 XP. But that same week, we got a breakout for Brandon Nash, giving him 15,000 XP. Later in the season, we got another trench boost. And this time, we got the big boost of 10,000 experience points. Ah. Opening like opening a soda. You love to see it. 10,000 XP for your alignment is really good. This is another year where we went 15 and two lost early in the season. So undefeated was never really in the question, but still a really good season for the boys. Uh, Brandon Nash here with 55 touchdowns, 13 picks on 5,400 yards. Really similar to what we saw last year. Another guy with a really similar season was Kevon Simmons. Over 2,000 yards, 17 touchdowns. 1,400 yards, double-digit touchdowns for Hazleton. Lewis Smart had his first career year under 1,000 yards. Um, I'm not showing uh, career stats yet. I think deeper into the careers when maybe they're going to start thinking about retiring, we will start to show career stats. Um, just so I can know, like, whenever they do retire, I can say, like, hey, these are their career stats. You know what I'm talking about. Really good sack production once again. McLean's a beast. Um, Boston actually got a pick this year. That's good. And uh, Matthew Welker had five missed field goals in terms of where we were in the league. Best passing offense in the league. 
Um, no surprise there. Best total offense in the league. Um, second best running offense in the league. Best points per game in the league by like five. So really good. Um, we're never really a good pass defense just because teams are always passing on us. But a lot of the other things, we are as good as it gets in the league. Player of the Week's for season two. I got a Brandon Nash here in week three. Again, we get a Brandon Nash here in week five. Hey, Brandon Nash, I feel like I've seen you here a couple of times. I mean, you see his end of season stats. You know he's going to have some players of the week. You get him again here in week 16. And so, and then we end the year with a Timmy Reed. Brandon Nash has never not won MVP. We do not get coach of the year this year. I decided to keep um, just the coach instead of making a new coach for this. Just so I wouldn't have to reset the coaching tree in it or anything like that. So, Brandon Nash is your best quarterback. Come on, Simmons is your best running back. Hazleton is top five for receivers. We also get Jalen Turner up in there. Brian Rhodes wins best offensive lineman of the year. He did not start for us, but that will give him superstar development. So that maybe gives us an option to move off of an offensive lineman in the next year or two as the cap tightens because we'll have a freaking superstar lineman. That brings us up to our third superstar on our offensive line, which is obviously super clutch. Jared Randolph, our first round pick, had a lot of upgrades this year. That's kind of what happens when you get multiple trench boosts, one of them being the full 10K XP. We, of course, also add him in focus players and also put a mentor at his position. I'm not showing any of that stuff. It's just, oh, it would make this video so much longer than it already is. I'm already, this video is longer than two hours. And I cut about about as much as I felt like I could. <laughs> but like I said, like recording this, it took eight hours more than that. Like it was close to nine actually of gameplay. So Brian Rose doesn't have it now, but um, is going to get superstar dev for winning offensive lineman of the year this year. Pretty ridiculous um, that he wins it when he wasn't one of our starters, but uh, I mean, I'll take free real estate. So just time to do some upgrades on him. He's got a lot as well. Kind of just those trench boosts can be, especially like early on in a career, like with Randolph and Rhodes, it's going to be massive helps to just get 12,000 XP. Like, we weren't getting a lot of trench boosts in the beginning of our San Antonio Express franchise. Maybe because we weren't having good enough weeks to trigger them. And then B, like, when we would trigger them, we wouldn't be able to get, like, the full 10k XP. But just getting those can be such a big boost. Whereas, like, Richard Younger, he was actually able to benefit because our team was good, and all of a sudden he, like, that overall to age comparison is even better than what Brian Pearson was at that age. And so like if we're, we're seeing the proof of how beneficial a, a some like early career trench boost could be for offensive linemen. I would love to see Richard Younger win an offensive lineman of the year in the next couple of years, get superstar dev. That would be, oh, a dream come true. Jerome Snell, our newly minted superstar as of the end of the season six. Is up here. Oh man, you love to see it. Come on, Simmons. Can I continue his upgrading? Almost a triple 99 here. We'll get him within just a couple points. And these guys are starting to age though, and so. Um, their regression isn't too far away. Eli Shayer, just make him a better patch protector at tackle for us. That's our main goal here. But maybe he could be the guy that we end up moving on for to let Rhodes play tackle for us. He is a pass protector archetype. He has tackle size. I feel like him getting superstar dev gives us the opportunity to save a little bit of money. I know Eli Shea didn't ask for a huge contract, but I feel like he's going to ask for a huge one in his next one. 
And so if we can just get off that contract now, not have to worry about paying that position for quite some time, because even like a guy like Rhodes, he's his, his next contract's going to be decently high, but it's not going to be incredibly high, you know, because he's probably going to be what, like mid 80s. That's at best, it's like 10 million a year. Hopefully to ask for even less than that. Quincy Boston continues to upgrade here. Goodness, he is really good at football. Undersized corner, but he turned into an absolute stud by the end of that franchise. Eddie Hazleton, he's getting really close. I think he's going to get that 99 overall. He just he needs to not regress next year and then get and then get one boost. He's going to get 15,000 XP. That's, that's going to happen. Uh, George McLean, going to continue his upgrade. He gets ever so close to 99 overall here. Just one point away i'm trying to get that so hopefully by the super bowl he can actually be worthy of the golden cleats because he is pretty close xp wise he might get that 99 overall as my plans were to make the super bowl this year this team doesn't have you can already see the at some point in the near future we aren't going to be able to pay everybody so want to win as much as we can with the team while we have it speed for michael franklin he did not need it he's up to 93 this dude's a stud. Jaron Lacey. He's a player that is really good. He's had, you know, his good moments in our franchise. Um, but probably somebody that ends up being a cap casualty once the team gets to be super expensive. I just look at all of our defensive linemen and I just don't see a world where he ends up being a long-term express. He did get a contract from us. I just don't know if he sees the end of it. But really like the player that he has been. Same could be said here for Wyatt Costanzo. I just I, I think he's a I think he's a good player. I've been happy to have him. Just how much longer can we pay all these players? You have to start, you have to get to a point where you prioritize some of your players. Because when you draft as well as we have in this franchise and you have the capital capital that we had in this franchise, you, you're going to get to a point where you're this good. But how long can you keep the window open? That's kind of the big question. Tim Reed almost up to a triple 99 as well. A couple of finesse moves there. It was smart. Getting up to that to triple 99. I don't know if he'll get there though. Darius Connor, and we'll just do a zone upgrade just to show you how much they suck. That one actually wasn't bad. It's still only one zone coverage, though. Like, zone coverage needs to upgrade zone coverage more. I don't know. That's just me, but the zone archetype feels like a high rate of increased zone coverage. Here we are. In the divisional round. Nice to see the San Antonio Express field. We'll go through like all the intros maybe once we get to like the AFC Championship. Don't want to like get super hyped for the divisional. With, when you're a team this good, the divisional round shouldn't be like anything that you're too excited about. Like I previewed before, the divisional round is something that we kind of own throughout this video. Just absolute domination for the most part. I mean, 41-23 didn't seem that bad, but I don't know. This team is just stomping people. Brandon Nash didn't even get to 30 attempts in the game. 295 yards, 3 touchdowns, no picks. 18 for 107 for Simmons. Uh, Jalen Turner balled out a bit. No sacks allowed. UTFL's one sack, one pick by Morris Morgan. Led to some upgrades after the fact. And George McLean, like I hoped he would, does get up to 99 overall prior to the Super Bowl. JT Bean with an upgrade here as well. We got Jaron Lacey. We got quite a few upgrades here for just like an after-divisional game, if we're being honest. Particularly because these guys aren't really young so a lot of their xp powers are actually getting to be 
quite high their thresholds for new upgrades. Here we are in the AFC Championship here in year seven. Going against Josh Allen and the Bills. One step away from playing in the Super Bowl. I am very antsy to hop on the sticks with a guy like Kevon Simmons as we're seeing right here. Such, such a fun player. And so I would very much so like to, you know, break off an explosive run with him. Oh man, an explosive run where like we actually make somebody miss. I miss that, I miss that. But well, let's get the simulation underway. We can't think too far ahead. You have to beat the Bills to get to the Super Bowl. Let's hop into it. Bills strike first with three. And then with another field goal. But we will take the one-point lead. Bills are playing us pretty tough here. Uh, lead's going back and forth between the two teams. Bills take the halftime lead, though. Been a really back-and-forth game all game long. We take the late lead but the bills spoil our super bowl hopes a game that went back and forth all the way through the entire game what a heartbreaking way i was so excited to play the super bowl with this team like i said i don't know how many years we have left left to play with this squad so you don't want to waste any by not going to the super bowl 30 of 43, three touchdowns. It certainly wasn't Brandon Nash that kept us from going to the Super Bowl. You have to put some blame on the defense. Um, but uh, I guess the one bright side is we get to see how many players of ours made it to the Super, to the Pro Bowl, I should say. And well, uh, it's a lot. Uh, four of our offensive line. We saw Smart. You saw Hazelson. You saw Simmons. You saw. Um, I'm just forgetting his name, Brandon Nash. You're seeing a bunch of players on defense. Not quite as many on defense, though. As our offense is nearly our entire offense made it. Uh, Matthew Walker is the Pro Bowl kicker as well. Uh, speaking of Matthew Walker, we're going to franchise tag him for this year. And Jalen Turner and JTB are unfortunately off the team and need to be replaced. Here's a look at our squad now. Brian Rowe gets... Gets an update, and I think we're going to move him to right tackle and potentially trade Eli Shea in this offseason. That is currently the plan. And then defensively, look at all these dev traits. Uh, Devin Walls is down to star. Uh, we need a slot corner. We need a receiver. What's going to help us is this trade to the Chargers. going to make our division a little bit better. Also, I just wanted to preview free agency i'm not going to do this a ton unless it's like players that leave our team but this year was crazy jalen hurts a 92 overall x factor at 26 years old didn't even get signed that's how crazy this free agency was like year two free agency in, in <laughs> madden 23 sometimes has some wild wild classes so just wanted to give a shout out to this crazy free agency class well, look how many play good players there are. Here in the draft, though, I found a couple players that I wanted to replace the guys that we that left in Jalen Turner and JT Bean. First being Heath Huggins at corner, 21 years old. Good size, great speed. B, man, coverage and press, catching, all that. Uh, has low injury, but in this, low injury doesn't matter. So, I don't care. Antonio Trent also... A guy that dropped in the class but looked really good to me, you know, um, not like a perfect prospect, but they both ended up being pretty solid players. 74 overall for Heath Huggins at 21 years old. He will wear the number of JTB, and I didn't even assign that to him. That's just naturally what he wore. And then Antonio Trey also just happened to wear number eight to replace Jalen Turner. It's kind of funny that they both wore their replacements numbers. Um, I didn't assign them those numbers at all, but I'll let him keep them for sure. But uh, I think we did a good job replacing the two players that we had to, to let go. Let's get into Season 8. And Season 8 is officially when we are at the end of the road. This is the last time a lot of the players on this team are going to be able to play together. We have $33 million in space. And look at all the players that we need to resign. The two biggest, by far, by far, George McLean and Brandon Ash. 
We have enough to bring back McQueen, so I'm just gonna get that contract out of the way now. Uh, make it as uh, as long as we can, maybe seven years, 148 million is a lot, but we're gonna offer it here to George McLean. He says yes. How we're gonna find the space to resign Brandon Nash with only 11 million left? I guess you'll just have to tune in later to the video to find out how we do that, but we need to clear about 30 million in space to make his neutral offer work. And how we're gonna do that is we basically just need to identify who are the core express, the guys that I want to have their entire career share offensively. I think it's Nash, I think it's Simmons, Hazleton, Smart, Pearson, and then maybe we choose one other offensive lineman other than that, I just don't think we can pay anybody else. Might have to move, look to move on from anyone who's not one of our core players. Maybe give the edge to Jerome Snow since he's superstar. But as is Rhodes, but he's also just like kind of on a different timeline. I also really like Snow because his contract is still four years and it's not very much money at all. He did not ask for a lot of money when he was a free agent. And so maybe as much as much as I love Younger... You have to look to move on from that contract, even though we just signed it. And me being greedy and re-signing everyone might actually come back to bite me because a lot of people are still early in on long-term deals and you don't actually save a lot of money for that on those. Taking a look here at defensively, I think McLean is a long-term player. Reed, Boston, and Franklin, I would say, are core players. Apart from those guys, we might just have to move on from about everyone else. It's just, I like a lot of these players, but our defense was just never quite as good as our offense. And we had a couple exciting players like McLean coming late that I want to keep forever. But we've already kind of started a rebuild here with like Leach, who wasn't really a part of our much, uh, sorry, a very big part of our team in the actual franchise, but he might be a big part here in that kind of the second window of this team. We have Huggins, a corner that we really like. So might see a lot of shifting parts on this defense after this year. Uh, offense too, but I think defense even more. Wanted to get ahead of things and create some rollover cap by getting rid of Giles now. I just think um, Leach can come in and play sub linebacker now for us. And then the only time we'd really be missing him would be in 4-3 packages. Got another... French boost here to kind of brighten the mood, but uh, stop me if you've heard this again. We went five, 15 and two for the third straight year. Once again, kind of lost, lost early enough into the season where undefeated was never really much of something that we had a chance for. But um, in terms of where we ranked in the league, once again, we were about as good as it gets. Actually didn't have quite as many pass yards, but we were the best rushing team in the league this year. By far the best points per game. And just at the top of the league in about everything defensively. Uh, we were only second best in the league. Uh, pass defense was has never been our strong suit rush. Still easily the best. Second best in terms of allowing points. Most sacks, most fumbles forced. Brandon Nash here with under 5,000 yards for the first time, but he did break the 55 touchdown pass barrier 23 touchdowns and 2100 yards for Kwan Simmons is obviously great um four guys over 970 yards with all double digit touchdowns you love to see Ryan Rhodes did really good in his first year starting for us at right tackle following only seven sacks George McLean comes in with 24 sacks his you know goat chase for edge player continues he has never had a bad year Going into upgrades, Brian Rhodes had seven, so a really good year. These trench boosts, like I said, are really, really valuable, especially for these young linemen, especially a young lineman with superstar dev. Going to make his development very quick and very nice. But um, ha so far, happy with the decision. I was worried that he might give up a lot of sacks here early, but only seven in his first year when like yes he's a pass protector but he's not still not that great right we're 
just now getting over 80 overall and he was he didn't upgrade throughout the season so he was in the 70s all season so really happy with his play hope he can continue to get these big boosts not an incredible run blocker but pass blocking looks really good for him jared randolph here also of course young lineman getting the trench boost so he's gonna have a lot of upgrades as well He, of course, doesn't quite have superstar dev, but still a player that you are excited to have going into the future. When you think about if this is going to be a career sim of Brandon Nash, he's going to go through like probably three different core teams, right? We're talking about the, the core that we have now. We need to start talking about like the next core when those guys are all regressing and retired brandon nash is still gonna be playing he might even even need it need a third core antonio Trea. trent i think somebody that we drafted at x factor by the way he didn't increase to that we drafted him here it's part of that second core and i think we have a couple of linemen that will be part of that second core and so the fact that we're getting a little bit of an early jump to make sure that he can stay productive throughout his career is really nice. A lot of upgrades here for Antonio Trent. Just trying to give him a little bit of everything. Uh, still needs some help in the route running department, but you know, as a bigger guy with speed, that's kind of what you expect here in man. And George McLean, Getting some upgrades here. Making him a little bit more well-balanced after we got him to 99 overall. His ratings are looking quite good. Richard Younger. Up over 90 overall. I really don't want to get rid of this player. I really don't. Just don't know if we're going to be able to afford him long term. And with Jerome Snell being cheaper and getting superstar dev, the, the, despite the fact that I like Younger more, as just like in terms of ratings wise, <sighs> might need to let him go. Joey Vasquez, upcoming free agent, don't have the cap space to pay him. Antonio Trent, I think, being an X Factor makes him expendable. Heath Huggins young player for us found out he was drafted as superstar so we drafted a superstar and an x-factor neither player got debbed up that's what we drafted them as that's huge that is like the perfect way to set up the future of this team the fact that we've gotten two superstars and an x-factor in the last two drafts um in terms of extending a window and getting really promising players on rookie deals you just can't ask for better than that ryan pearson i think is just going to come just short of getting the 99 overall here in his career it's really unfortunate you'd love to be able to get uh, like a 99 overall offensive lineman but um But I, he's still like really good. He hasn't allowed like double digit sacks in a year, which I know isn't like the highest bar to attain to, but in Madden, it's a pretty high bar to attain to. Uh, still got it. Before before we ch play a Super Bowl, I'll update all these players that have gray sleeves that should have orange sleeves. But until we really play a game, I'm not too worried about it. Which of course we'll have to wait till at least next year to do. Upgrades continuing for everyone. This is something that um, ended up taking more time in the video than I was thought when I first said I wanted to do the upgrades at the beginning of the video. Um, this is part one of a multi-part uh, finale. And I think in the next one, we might not be able to do the upgrades. Maybe because all the players that like our original express will be so old that they won't really get upgraded much anymore and b uh just because it will save me so much time and uh this 
I mean, I don't want to spoil how many years we go into, but you can probably guess. Uh, if we want to get all the way through Brandon and Nash's career and we don't want this to be like five videos, I'm going to have to find ways to trim them down a little bit. And I think not showing upgrades in the future, future part two or part three or however many parts we need to do this in, um, that could save us a lot of time. I will continue to do it throughout the rest of this video, though. Can we get to the Super Bowl here? In year three. Um, if we want the team as we know it, the San Antonio Express, to play together one last time, it's going to have to be getting to the Super Bowl. I don't really see any other way this team makes it. So, divisional round, we continue to dominate, 38-7 at half. Um, yeah, we are, we're going to the AFC Championship at least here. 62-10 to 10 in simulation is quite dominant. Maybe this team knows that this is their last chance to play together and they are doing everything they can to get one last ring. 22 of 30 for 330 and three. Three touchdowns on the ground for Kevon Simmons. Obviously, really great as well. Really smart. Let us in catches. No sacks allowed by the offensive line. Two sacks for each for Lacey and McQueen. A couple picks for Heath Huggins. Now in the AFC Championship game where it is raining against the Houston Texans. Long way from where they started out. But uh, yeah, I guess signing Lamar Jackson in free agency puts you in a good spot. It looks like they also got Calvin Ridley there. But um, I mean, everything that you fear about from facing a guy like Lamar Jackson, you fear even more from Brandon Nash, right? He's an even better version of Lamar Jackson. I mean, come on now. But the elements... Certainly could play an impact on this game and could keep us from the Super Bowl yet again. Let's try and make sure that does not happen. We'll get on the board first and second. A nice early cushion that can make you feel a little good about things. But Houston's not going away. We keep trying to pull away and Houston keeps coming right back. Uh, we're going to have to sweat this one out here late as it is a three-point game into the fourth quarter here. Houston will not stop scoring touchdowns, but we do just enough to hold them off and we will be going to the Super Bowl where I will finally get my chance to hop on the sticks and play with this team once more. Brandon Nash was not about, not about to let this season end. Six passing touchdowns, 288 yards. Defense disappoints once again. Uh, maybe already starting to see the signs of regression there, but offense continues to hum along behind our excellent quarterback. Three sacks for Costanzo. Interception for Jacob Leach. MVP once again is Brandon Nash. Come on, Simmons is Offensive Player of the Year. George McQueen somehow doesn't win Defensive Player of the Year. I thought he had an incredible year. Didn't get Rookie of the Years either, which is unfortunate as we did have a couple of rookies starting. Best quarterback and running back. Um, had a player in the top one. A couple, I guess, in the top ten. Rashard Younger wins best offensive lineman. That makes things so complicated. As I was planning on having to let him go because I gave Drum Snell the edge because he was superstar. Now Rashard Younger is going to go out and get superstar dev. He's still more expensive, though. He is younger. He is better, I would say. Who do you keep? Got a little bit more to upgrade here before we hop into the Super Bowl. And I am very excited to play this game. Jared Randolph here with an upgrade. Gets a little bit better at run blocking. And Jacob Leach trying to make him an all-around player with pass and run stopping abilities. He is looking pretty good, honestly. He's developed a lot since we first started. And then Antonio Trent as well. 
getting some upgrades now up to 78 overall. Delvin Walls, seen some regression here from him. Antonio Trent ended up getting another upgrade, so that's fun. And we are underway in the Super Bowl, and we'll kick it off with a throw downfield to Lewis Smart. Gain of 22 right off rip. And what I'm going to do here with the Super Bowl highlights is we see a dart down the middle to Eddie Higginson gets down to the two-yard line. It's going to be more of a express highlight reel than really like a game log that we've seen in the past. Eddie Hazleton gets us on the board here with a nice slant touchdown reception. I just don't really see the value of you guys seeing like the good Washington commander plays. The point of this is to highlight our players as Morris Morgan breaks over pass there. And we get the quick three now on an Eddie Lacy sack. Wanted to get there with McLean, but Lacy beat me to it. Um You'll see there that that's not don't expect a ton of defensive highlights in this game, our defense wasn't surprisingly very great but uh really smart with a nice stiff arm there getting past the man later in the game we get a run with brandon nash running the ball is harder than i had hoped i was really looking forward to a bunch of just like big runs with come on simmons they were much harder than i had imagined when we started the game the washington defensive front was just menacing eddie hitchison already with two touchdown catches in the game though and downfield we have Lewis Smart on the corner route. Trucks past the defender, can't quite break the tackle, but he does fall forward. Just seeing the run after the catchability of a guy like Lewis Smart just makes me miss the good old days. Eddie Hazleton gets us down to the three yard line. We're on third and goal. We punch it in with Kevon Simmons. Nice blocking there on the pistol counter play. One of my favorites in the playbook. Defensively, it's about time we saw another highlight, and this time Delvin Walls will get the running back in the backfield. But we still end up letting them score that drive. But Eddie Hazleton gets deep, and the defensive back dives does not get him in. Eddie Hazleton already with three touchdowns in the first half of this Super Bowl. He continues to be a star performer in the postseason when we need him most. Love the clutch factor of Eddie Hazleton. Always shows up in the brightest moments under the brightest lights. Continuing here with more offensive highlights, we get to the smart once again downfield. It was really forcing the ball to Hazleton and Smart and Simmons in this game, if we're being honest. But oh man. Oh, how I missed this. The spin move and still the speed to get into the end zone. You love. Oh, the playmaking ability of a running back. I've already previewed just briefly the draft class coming up and there might be a generational running back and a run like this. Oh, I don't know what started happening to the highlights here, but they started getting really jittery. But just the ability to make a man miss and still have the speed to get to the end zone. Oh, I miss it so much. Might. Might need to trade up for that generational running back in our Bulls franchise. Oh my goodness. And Quincy Boston there with a nice pass breakup. Probably wouldn't happen had I not used it in there. So that was disappointing. But nine point lead and the ball. We get a nice reception from Lewis Smart. Here's one of my favorites of the day. Is That's a deep shot between the safeties and Eddie Hazleton. touchdown number four in the Super Bowl. 
Another deep shot. Just an absolute strike from Brandon Nash. Hazleton puts this game nearly out of reach. Oh my goodness. Again, the jittery highlights make this not as smooth as it could be, but what a throw by a 99 overall MVP quarterback. Nice play by Connor here on the screen. Somehow Brian Robinson holds on to it. And then on the next play, we get some pressure late, and Dubin Walls will pick the ball off. Give the offense a chance to go up and put a 50 burger on these boys, and you know I am motivated to do it. Real smart there with a nice catch on the corner out. Nice to just have somebody that you can just kind of blindly trust. Hadn't got him into the end zone, but we do that now. A little bit of a jig there, but things are looking mighty nice that the San Antonio Express can get their second. Sorry, if you include the series and this video, their third Super Bowl in four years. Wyatt Costanza will pick up the fumble, he'll score it. 50 points wasn't enough for the boys in this one. We had to come out and defiantly state that we are the best in the business and we'll get yet another defensive play not a lot of defensive plays in the middle of this game but late they showed up and you know five seconds left i mean we're just messing around with the boys here you know we're gonna try to score five touchdowns for 80 Hazleton in the super bowl the best receiving performance i have seen in madden 23 he was beating these boys deep every play we're not even seeing that from deacon burgess yet 99 overall play. Or maybe we just don't have a quarterback that can hit him quite as consistently as Brandon Nash can hit. But here we are celebrating the third bowl in four years, creating what can not be denied is an absolute dynasty. What a great way to end what's going to be the last season for a lot of our players, particularly I think our defensive players. A lot will be leaving in the offseason whether that's we just can't resign their contracts and they're up or we might need to even cut or trade some players but what a lovely image we're seeing brandon nash holding the lombardi right in that what like it's his own son it might as well be his son at this point the man can't stop winning them Although you don't shake babies like that, please don't do that. Maybe he shouldn't be a father. But uh, an awesome Super Bowl. It, I was like, had a lot of expectations and a lot of hopes for how fun this team would be to use her once again. They exceeded my expectations. The defense was disappointing. I will say, like, I couldn't get a sack with George McQueen in this game. But, uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, a couple picks i was just i was forcing things today brandon nash was incredible on simmons i i wish we could have had more highlights of him but getting that long run was everything you could have hoped for forcing the ball to smart and hazelton is those guys one of the guys i really cared about in this game and then just a really really fun experience i am glad all the work that went into this episode was definitely worth it to be able to hop onto the sticks one more time and play with the boys Hazleton here with an upgrade following the game. And Nash, we're already starting to see some regressions, but we have so many points banked up that uh, we're going to be able to keep him at 99 overall, even with regression for quite some time. And now his arm is up to 96 throw power, which is quite good. Uh, Jerome Snell, also with a post-Super Bowl upgrade here. We will be franchise tagging Brandon Nash. Um, puts us way into the hole, and so we can't re-sign players like Walls, Leach, Vasquez, Welker. Sorry, they're all gone. Didn't know Leach was out. He was somebody that I was hoping could replace Giles, but now we desperately need a linebacker in this offseason. Um, to make some room, we're releasing Jaron Lacey. We saved some space with this move. Uh, I view it as necessary. Another guy we will be releasing is Morris Morgan. Um, somebody that we want, White Costanzo, I think it will eventually be out the door. I just think uh, he's, he, we don't save any money this year. Let's see where they went in free agency. Morris Morgan. Oh, you traitor. Going to the Cowboys. Oh, Walls and Morgan both go to the Cowboys. Leach to the Panthers. Welker to the Steelers. That breaks my heart. 
Jaron Lacy to the Cowboys. We got three defensive players all going to the Cowboys, and then Vasquez went to the Vikings. Here in this draft, had to replace some very valuable players leaving, and there's a linebacker I liked here in Damian Leonard. He is hidden dev at 6'2 and 250 pounds with 89 speed. I think he's going to be a really good player for us. In the next kind of chapter of this team, didn't love the safety class, but Lonnie Higgins was the best here. And, you know, he looks pretty good with 91 speed and hidden development. He's kind of small, though. Um, and then I also want, like another receiver here in Trey Thompson. We'll make that pick as well. So another six foot four guy with some speed. Not, uh, not another six foot four guy. I don't think we have one, but another guy with size like we got with our previous pick. And then lastly, I ended up making quite a few picks in this draft. Uh, just one of these finesse rushing defensive tackles that we've seen. Um, yep, that's about what we expect. Maybe a little bit slower on the speed, but he's fine. The fact that we were able to find four hidden devs, though, is quite good. Damian Leonard, I mean, this is a really good pick. I like it a lot. I would love to have a player like this on a team that I am actually playing with. Um, Lonnie Higgins, small guy. I don't think that's going to come in... To too much effect with the simulating that we're doing but he's got good zone coverage to start out decent hit power as well like the pick thompson i think is going to do a good job replacing vasquez similar kind of skill set as a physical receiver i actually think i like thompson more than i liked vasquez and then uh, last and least of the guys that we drafted was Brian Ash, he's kind of at the low end of like this finesse rusher archetype that you'll see from Madden in the mid rounds. But I mean, we got him fairly late, so I'm fine with it. We got a mentor ship for wide receiver here for Antonio Trent. And uh, I always accidentally press A, and so would they just get juke move? I would rather get release and route running, but whatever. I'm trying to get through the conversation because I don't want to hear it, but then you just automatically press the first thing. Lonnie Higgins also got some upgrades though so he gets some zone coverage looking for just a preview of what we might be looking at going to the next season we got 84 million still got quite a few guys i think we're close to being out of the you know doghouse i don't think we're quite there yet i think these three players will require more than 84 million to retain and that gets us ready for season nine Brandon Nash is up for contract. Seven years, 341 million. He's worth every dime. He has never not won MVP in this league. Let's get him the contract. That puts us at 32 million remaining. I think we can get Timmy Reed for that. I don't know if we'll be able to retain Eddie Hazleton. We've drafted well at receiver. Uh, we have two guys that I think could maybe take over the load at receiver. I would love to keep Hazleton, but Timmy Reed was one of the four core defenders that I feel like we cannot lose. And so I, I know Hazleton was also a core offensive player. We just have more core offensive players. Couldn't bring myself to releasing Richard Younger. We also wouldn't have saved any cap. So he's a guy, if we end up releasing him, it'll be more of a next year move. We end this season 17 and oh, ladies and gentlemen. And it was a season without really many close games either. We were blowing out teams left and right. Scoring 40 almost every game at least. Um, an absolute awesome season. It was a season I thought we might have some regression just because we had to get rid of some players, but uh, Nash still had 5,000 yards and 50 touchdowns, baby. He cut down on his picks. Come on, Simmons scored a million touchdowns. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, not much of a rushing season for Nash. He is getting a little bit older, though. 4,000 for 1,000 yard receivers, not a 4,000 yard receiver. Now, that would be absolutely ludicrous. But all with eight plus touchdowns as well. Um, offensive line, Brian Rhodes had some regression, but everyone else allowed a maximum of three sacks. We had a tackle, Brian Pearson, zero sacks from a tackle. And this is the craziest of all, ladies and gentlemen. We haven't even seen it yet. Not only did we get 37 and a half from Reed, but McLean also had 32 and a half. We got rid of half of our defensive line. Actually, we haven't even got rid of Costanzo yet. He also had 19 and a half. What is our defensive line doing? They are on crack, dude. Brian Ash probably could have had more sacks, but everyone was getting to the quarterback first. A combined 70 sacks between two players is 
nuts. What? 70 sacks from two players, and then the third guy just comes in with 20? Have you ever seen something like that in this game? That is nuts. Quincy Boston with three picks. That was like insane to see. 37 and a half and 32 and a half. And then the third guy's out here bringing in a 20 sack performance. Like, what is going on, man? Oh, you gotta love this team, dude. Of course, just dominating the league. And then, you know, not, not exactly the best defense, but that's fine. We're still by far the best rushing defense, still the best scoring defense, actually. 102 sacks. 41 more than the next team. I bet, I bet there's several teams that didn't even get 41 sacks. And we were 41 more than the second team. Oh. Ryan Rhodes still in year three of his career is getting six upgrades in the season. I think we got two 10k XP trench boosts this year. We are getting a ton. I'm not even showing them anymore. We're so deep into the franchise, man. But... Um, Offensive line continuing to get a bunch of great upgrades. He already has his second ability slot unlocked, and he has still on his rookie deal. So has another year on that rookie deal as well. So, yeah, super happy with where we are there. Um, wow, he just got a ton of run block. Five run block right there. Nice. His ratings are looking good now. They never, they never like to show Ryan Rhodes' face. I feel like there's been multiple times where they, his face just won't show up. Antonio Trent here at wide receiver. A couple deep runner at least. That's what you love to see, man. Playmaker. That that little, like, symbol, the guy that's like the symbol for playmaker, he is not holding onto that football very well. It's like a quarterback scrambling. That's not like a playmaker. That's just if you ask me, though. Although, you know, we do happen to have a quarterback that scrambles and is a playmaker himself. Antonio Trent had a really big year in terms of upgrades. Surprised to see so many this, I don't want to say deep into his career. We're not all that deep into his career. But, um... You'll have to see it. He continues to get better. He's really good with the ball in his hands for his guy that's 6'2 and 230. Tough guy to bring down, Damian Leonard, a guy that we drafted at Superstar Development, dude. I don't know. I am just the greatest drafter this game has ever seen, honestly. Like, I don't know what's got into me. I just can't help but draft studs, even when I'm not even doing that much research into the draft, man. Obviously, I think doing research in the draft is very important. And I think I've just, whoa, five-man coverage is sick. But, uh... And I, I do put a lot of research into my drafts, and I think that's a big reason why I tend to consistently have good classes, apart from one bad Saints class that uh, I just didn't have enough information going into because I couldn't set up my board from the beginning of the draft. But, um, yeah, our, our draft can success in the expansion draft only franchises, even when I'm doing a long-term sim style continues to be excellent i don't know what it is man i'm using madden draft classes i promise cross my heart swear to cry but like oh I'm, I'm just too good i'm just too good i have to toot my own horn even though i'm definitely tuning my own horn i just don't know if i'm capable of being bad at drafting I need to like find a way to make the draft challenging again you know what i mean just kidding i i'm having a ton of fun with the draft in this game. Probably because I'm having so much success. Like if I sucked at drafting, I probably wouldn't be having so much fun. But uh, I have found Madden 23 drafts to be very gratifying to use. Also something that I haven't been showing on this video is like our offensive and defensive coordinators get hired every single season. There has not been one season on this where I have not had to replace both. I don't know. Uh, Ryan Ash ends up with Star. Looking pretty good. Not incredible or anything. George McLean. Starting to have to upgrade him again. Is he... Or did he ever get triple... No, he's not regressing. He never got triple 99. What am I talking about? I am high.
one more upgrade for him now he's almost triple 99 he's got one more upgrade until he hits that mark and he shouldn't be regressing at the end of the season so i think he'll get there Rashard younger somebody just because brian rhodes actually struggled this year at the end of this year we might move him to tackle and then move Rhodes to guard might be a little bit cheating because we just paid younger as a guard and then that would put us in a position to pay, pay Rhodes as a guard but um at this point, we're, this seems so expensive. I'm, I'm fine to cheat just a little bit by paying both of those players as guards. Um, Huggins here with a few upgrades. I think he is a really good looking player. We took him, uh, what, like pick 11 in his draft. Really good size, really good speed. This develops into pretty good man coverage. We'd like to just get him up to 85 overall. Uh, obviously, he's he's not all the way there yet, but he's well on his way. Let's get this last upgrade in here for Lonnie Huggins. And there we have it. A couple man and a zone there. Zone is up to a base of 80, and man is at a base of 70. Hazleton, we did get to 99 overall. Didn't know if he would make it. He ended up getting there pretty easily as we have even upgrades beyond that lewis smart also a guy i didn't know if we'd get to triple 99 overall we might i don't know he, he'll probably get a point of regression i would say this offseason so it looks like he'll just miss it by one over one upgrade one upgrade away from a triple 99 overall probably would have got it if we were playing because he would be getting more production not that he's had bad production i think he's had a, he's had multiple 1000 yard years in you know the simulation i didn't i didn't know if he would get that honestly but like he's not getting like the 1400 yards that we got from him in the past but even when we were playing he wasn't getting the 1400 yards he had in the past you know what i mean so let's hop into this divisional game we got the division rival chiefs uh i did give the those guys like i gave the chiefs back josh jacobs and max crosby like i did in the original one i gave all the players that i gave in the express franchise i gave them back to those teams so the the chiefs have had crosby and jacobs i don't think either have been quite as stellar as they were in the expansion draft only franchise like crosby's not out here just like being the best edge in the league we haven't seen him like winning the award right or it could just be because our defensive linemen are so good that's the reason he's not winning the defensive awards you know not anything of his doing but um all these home playoff games nice to see the field nice to see the orange greens i think the orange greens are easily better than our white ones but uh we get on the board first but we don't hit the extra point we no longer have matthew welker although like he wasn't even being stellar in the simulation he was missing like five field goals a year which i mean i get it that's not like, terrible but your 99 power and accuracy is probably just because the cpu was trying him out for 70 yarders we destroyed the chiefs you know 50 to 6 holy not we haven't really had many <laughs> division rivalries here because we started being so good and uh you know i haven't gone less than 15 and 2 in a year yet our most losses in the year so far is three because we were like 15 and 2 in our most in the playoffs that year. So, most wins has been 20 because we have gone 20 out. I guess, no, we haven't gone 20 in now. I was I thought last year was undefeated. This year was undefeated. I'm getting my years mixed up. That's what happens when you simulate so many years in one sitting, guys. Uh, we have the AFC Championship. Punching our ticket to another Super Bowl chance. Can we get the fourth trip in five years? Kind of ourselves a little, a little bit of a safety there. You love to see it. But uh, yeah, this game's looking pretty favorable for our Express. And we will go to the Super Bowl. Now we're 19 0. We have a chance to win 20 for the first time. All these years are starting to get mixed in my head, especially because I am voice recording this after I've played it. And so it's just hard to keep track of everything because I just played all these seasons not too long ago. I'm voice recording this a few days after I actually recorded the gameplay, but uh, we get to face Dallas in the Super Bowl. I am very excited for this matchup. I think the most anticipated matchup of this of this episode, of this video, 
Maybe the last, the first Super Bowl with the Express was, but there's a lot of former Express defenders over there suiting up for the Cowboys, and so I decided that I'm going to play another game. I thought that one game might have been enough for me, but I'm going to play offense only for this game. I feel like a lot of our defense has moved on. Our offense remains mostly intact, and we get to play some former Express on the other side of the ball. Uh, Brandon Nash is still yet to play a season in the NFL in which he was not the MVP. We get Offensive Rookie of the Year. Second place for Defensive Rookie of the Year is really unfortunate. You'd love to see Leonard with an upgrade. Also, has there been a year where in this video where <laughs> Kevon Simmons hasn't won Offensive Player of the Year? I don't think there has been. We've been winning Best Offensive Lineman every year. No surprise there. Uh, we've been getting like McLean and Reed are like punching each other, trying to get Best Defensive Lineman from each other. But, um, yeah, I mean, you see uh, Max Crosby was up towards the top of the best linebackers list, but Welker got 10th best kicker. Before we hop into this Super Bowl, though, let's get some more upgrades out of the way and get up to a base of 85 man coverage with Huggins. Here on offense, again, this is offense only, so no defensive highlights for this game, but we will get a quick throw over the middle to Eddie Hazleton. He starts the game off with the 20-yard catch. And we hit Lewis Smart right between Morris Morgan and Delvin Walls there, both lined up on our right side of the screen. Kevon Simmons gets beautiful blocking, able to get 12 yards on his first carry of the game. In general, it was a little bit easier to run the ball in this game. And we split the safeties, and he falls forward in the end zone. And he, Hazleton scores the touchdown. We have another massive performance like we saw in the first Super Bowl from him. That would be pretty tough to replicate. Uh, I did forget to give Brandon Nash the, the throws tight spiral straight, so that's why we're seeing some wobblers out of our guy. But something he doesn't wobble on is his legs as he's got the speed. The speed doesn't quite work, but he does get down to the 36. A gain of 40 yards there. The herd and 11. Uh-oh. Are we seeing Eddie Hazleton 2.0? Another five touchdown performance in his veins? I don't know, but he's certainly on track with two early touchdowns. Getting some separation on the corner route. Nash nearly overthrows him, but gets it just there enough. Come on, Simmons. Trucking through a Delvin Walls tackle. You'll love to see that. A big hitter and a big time runner. The very next play, we give it right back to Kevon. He's got another first down. The blocking is excellent with this offensive line. I mean, to be fair, they're looking really, really good. And Lewis Smart there. Catch and run into the secondary. Ah, man. Just the run after the catch ability of a guy like Lewis Smart. Something we are desperately. I am desperately missing, I should say, in this offense. Right over to number 33 there. I have no idea who it is, and I don't care. What a beautiful throw. And got to see a little bit of that route running that, uh, come on, Simmons has developed since we last played with him. Brandon Nash. He's rolling out here. Man, that 99 speed at quarterback is something spectacular. Just so hard to stop. Not even like the athletes like Micah Parsons and Jaron Lacey they have can stop this man. Trucking through a Javon Holland tackle there. In general, like I said before, just a better day running the ball, and we absolutely destroy former teammate Delvin Walls on that run. Just embarrassing. Planting him on his Hushki on our way into the end zone. 
That guy on offense. We get another play towards Kevon Simmons. And another first down rush. Nice juke. That looks like he transported on that one. First and 10 back to pass. Almost getting sacked, but we get it to Lewis Smart. Morris Morgan in coverage couldn't handle all that Lewis Smart has to offer. Of course, they probably had many battles in training camp. And, uh-oh, touchdown number three of the day. Eddie Hazelton, that's so far eight touchdowns and two Super Bowls. This guy cannot be stopped in the Super Bowl. He just wants all the action. He wants all the smoke. Shows up for the big games. Going deep to Lewis Smart on Morris Morgan once again. I just tried to test this matchup a couple times. Lewis Smart kept on winning, man. Morris Morgan, I really liked him late in our franchise, but uh, Lewis Smart I liked even more. And he gets a nice run after the catch touchdown here. Oh, This team had some special, special players. And I... Despite the fact that like my brain was fried by the time that I stopped uh, recording this, it was absolutely worth it, man. It's so, so fun to use some of the best players we've been able to get on the channel. And of course, we had to get a Brandon Nath rushing touchdown. Like, what? What's a couple of express games without a Brandon Nath rushing touchdown? We saw the big run earlier, but we got to get our boy into the end zone. Nice little. QB rat play that we have used before. I love that play, getting Brian Pearson out as a lead blocker. It works so well in the red zone. I mean, that play is a money in the red zone. And that's not, why, why not put 50 on our former teammates here with a deep shot to Lucas Smart at the corner of the end zone late. Beautiful place ball. And... Another game where maybe the defense wasn't great. I mean, we didn't play with them this time. We don't really know what happened. Madden also gifted them a couple short fields with some fumbles, but uh, another easy Super Bowl victory and a really fun game to play. We continue to increase the amount of banked points. Even with the regression, our banked points are growing faster than, his, than Nash's regression is. Oh, I have no idea when this guy's going to retire. He might honestly play until he's 45. I will... He's probably playing until he's 45, if we're being honest. Just all these points he's banking up. Quarterbacks don't, you tend to not retire until they're kind of bad, so he's going to take so long to get bad. Damian Leonard here with up pass. Coverage upgrade. Another guy that we got to work on getting towards that 85 overall mark. Brian Rhodes, somebody that we're going to have to pay soon, so I think we're going to change him to guard. One thing we had to do was we had to release uh, Y Costanzo here, and that gave us just enough money in free agency to go after Eddie Hazelton. Now, draft only, you're going after him in free agency? Sure, yeah, I understand that, but it's that's like the earliest we could have offered him, and he's a player that's only played for the Express, so I didn't mind giving him this offer. I don't feel like it takes away from the draft only experience. He accepted that. We see Costanzo and Connor. Two of the biggest names that left the team this year. But um, Chargers going out and getting some pieces. Costanza to the Commanders. And Connor goes to our division rivals, who also have the number one pick. In this draft, we selected at 15. Uh, we had some guys that we needed to replace, Costanzo being one of them. And I chose AJ Crothers, a guy who honestly kind of reminds me of White Costanza when we drafted them. Just like decent speed. Gonna have some finesse moves about him. Probably gonna be like Stardew, like we saw from Mike Asanzo. I just think a good, quick replacement line. Look at all those skills at the left. Oh my goodness, we are so good. Emmett Blakely here to replace Darius Connor. Has some hit power, awareness, has some coverage about him. He ends up being a 75 overall player. So, happy with that pick. Um. Not like not anything incredible, but I think we had a pretty solid draft here. Uh, ahead of what is this now? Year ten? Oh boy, oh boy, this is something. Hey, CPU drafted us a hidden dev quarterback. You'll love to see it six six overall. It'd be a cheap backup alternative to 
Brandon Nash for the next few years. We got a mentor rookie here. So we get an instant dev increase for Anthony Harrington, a backup running back that we got. The CPU drafted him. Um, maybe eventual replacement for Come on, Simmons, question mark. Uh, I know running backs don't last the longest in this game. Um, finally, stayed patient enough to actually get some route running <laughs> with this wide receiver mentorship. So glad I wasn't too trying to get through this too fast and we actually can get Trey Thompson something that we wanted to upgrade. We also have another camp breakout this time for AJ Crothers. Confirms he's only star dev. That's fine. Let's get him three pass rush moves for both power and finesse. Here's your here's season ten. Uh, we now have seventy three million, and we only have really three players to spend it on. So I think we have officially gotten ourselves out of the doghouse cap wise. Of course, had to let go of some really fun long term express to do it, but I identified the core players that I wanted to make sure that we kept. And we've kept them. Quincy Boston at, is at the point of the career where he's only asking for one-year deals. I'll sign those one-year deals all day. $13 million a year for Michael Franklin, I think, is also very worth it. And once again, we go 17-0. We have not lost a game since I said we were gonna, since we were seeing the end of this team. <laughs> like, not the end of this team. I didn't think we would be bad. But not losing a game. Brennan Ash, touchdown wise, his worst year still has 5,000 yards. That's because, I mean, come on, Simmons was still in all the touchdowns. Boy, had 30 rushing touchdowns. Dude, come on, Simmons. Oh, bless this man. I love him to death. We still have four 1,000-yard receivers, though. Like, the, we, this little foursome that we had with Lewis Smart and then the three, three wide receivers has been money. No one allowed more than five sacks. Five sacks for center is actually kind of high. The fact that everyone else was under five. I mean, Rashard Younger in his first year at tackle was incredible. I mean, it's not like 70 from last year, but Crawler's coming in and getting 12, a 12 sacks immediately. Two guys over 25. This pass rush is incredible. 500 yards more of offense than everybody else in the league. Still second in the league in passing. And this is the first year we were not first in the league in rushing, I believe. Um, second in passing touchdowns. First in rushing touchdowns. Uh, best def we got back to best defense in the league. The, the picks that we've made have been good enough to get keep us as the best defense in the league, something that we didn't really get all that often with our core defense. So we have drafted extremely well on both sides of the ball. Brian Rhodes, once again, six upgrade points throughout the year. Again, he's getting good. Like, six is a lot. We keep getting so many successful trench boosts on this team. It is exciting. Um, and... I'm really glad that we have already retained his services for $10 million a year so that uh, all these upgrades are making him a better player without making him any more expensive over the next seven years. I think securing a superstar tackle for uh, on a seven-year deal is going to be huge for whenever this first core of Smart, Simmons, and Hazelton have to leave the team as well as you know guys like Pearson and uh, Snell. Those are all guys that are on their regression paths at this point in, the, in their careers. And so the fact that we've been able to identify a few different, like really good players all, that will already be in place to kind of be that second team around Ren and Nash have already been producing for several years. It's just, I think a really exciting thing. Crothers here gets up to 79 overall, already has 85 finesse rules, probably going to get I would say defensive rookie of the year and maybe get up to superstar dev as well, which just puts us in an even better spot going towards the future. I think there's honestly going to be a really smooth transition. And whenever part two comes out, when we're going to start seeing guys retire, um, I think there's just going to be a really smooth. Uh, there's not going to be much of a drop off. We're probably not going 17 and 0 every year, if you know what I mean. But I think we're going to be a team that can get first round by still, which is going to be huge. Um, the drafting, I don't know. I mean, obviously when I say we've been so good at drafting, I'm basically, you know, pumping myself up. But I think it's pretty warranted. We've been really good. So, um, 
let's get through more of these upgrades. Uh, we are getting towards the end of this video, so just thinking about like an, uh, a part two that will be coming out. Like I said, I think I need to focus on getting through more years. Like this video being two hours, I don't want to make it like part two, like a five hour video at this pace. We're like Nash is going at least 10 more years. At least 10 more years. Year 10 is the last year of this video. Um, and so at this same pace, if he goes, let's just say he goes 15 more years, it might happen. That's that's a seven hour video. I, I, I can't do that. I want to try to get it, oh, Nash's career into the next video. Got to shorten what I'm showing each year. These upgrades probably going to take him out. Uh, I might still manually do them. I just won't show them probably. Um, because I do like to have, you know, well-balanced and good players. Heath Huggins gets his second um, uh, superstar ability slot, which is really big for him. Also gets a speed. Oh, man. Really good player. Not the best corner I've drafted. That would be Danny Goodrich. Danny Goodrich, holy moly, and Bulls franchise. He's so good. But, um, he, like, he's so good already. He's, like, year four Quincy Boston, and he's in year two, which is awesome. <laughs> So, um, yeah, really excited about him. But also, you know, Huggins, Heath, Heath Huggins is a good name too. Lonnie Higgins is a good name. We've got Huggins and Higgins. Damian Leonard would like to get him up to 85 overall so we can get his second ability slot. At the same time, don't want him to be too one dimensional. So, we'll alternate a little bit between pass coverage and run stopper. George McLean does get to that triple 99 that you love to see. Richard Younger here. Going to continue his trajectory. I didn't think uh, Brian Pearson would get 99 overall. I don't know about Younger. He, he has a chance. He's already kind of getting to the point. Like 24,000 XP for an upgrade is a, a lot of XP. But if we keep getting these trench boosts, like that's... We've been averaging two successful 10k trench boosts a year for the last couple of years. Like that's basically an upgrade almost right there that he wouldn't would otherwise not get. Just short of that, obviously. Twenty thousand does not equal twenty four thousand. I'm aware, but um, that gives him like the majority of the way towards a towards an upgrade just for for free. It was smart. Does get to triple ninety nine overall. Let's go. He did not experience any regression. From age 29 to 30 so triple 99s for our guy brian pearson also ends up making 99 overall i think if brian pearson makes it like he did just now i think richard younger might make it as well which the fact that we drafted him as a star dev player that's kind of nuts i mean Rhodes might get there too he got superstar in his second year has had like six upgrades every year for his whole career it's been nuts six or seven but uh here in the divisional round against the steelers can we make yet another Super Bowl run with the San Antonio Express that have easily become the most, can you say they're the most dominant dynasty ever? I think a lot, of, there were some pretty powerful dynasties from before my time. I think you got to say they're more dominant than even the Patriots were, which is like the most recent dynasty, right? So, there were some like years where the Cowboys dominating and stuff like that. But I don't know. This is looking like a pretty dominant dynasty to me. Hey, we're going against Matthew Welker. Let's uh, kick his butt, shall we? We get on the board with three. We just kick only field goals this game. Just to show Matthew Welker. We don't need him. So we let up a safety. I don't know how we did that. How does this offensive line and Kevon Simmons let up a safety? Or I guess Brandon Nash could have let it up. I'm not, I, I shouldn't assume we ran the ball. Uh, this game ended up being pretty close with the Steelers having a chance to beat us. So this is like the only divisional game that was close. We ended up pulling it out by the hair of our teeth, though. Like the, the lowest passing yards we've seen from Brandon Nash in a game. Simmons still got over 100. Houston got right to 100. Not a great big day from those smart. Uh, Jared Randolph. That guy just keeps allowing sacks. A couple sacks there for Timmy Reed. Brings us to the AFC Championship where we will face the Chiefs. Somebody we beat 50-6 to six last year in the playoffs. 
but they are a divisional opponent, so you can never underestimate them. We get on the board quick, they match, we take the lead right back, and then we take it, it to a two score game. Chiefs hanging around in this one though, but uh, we start pulling away. But uh, you never know with Patrick Mahomes. No lead is safe, but this one ends up being safe enough. We double them up 42 to 21 and punch our ticket to yet another Super Bowl. The fourth of this video in five years. Of course, we went to the Super Bowl the year before this as well. Fifth Super Bowl trip in five years. Crothers, the rookie, having a good game in the AFC Championship game. Let's go to the Super Bowl. We decide to wear the white unis this time around. I don't know if I, how I feel about that. I'm pretty sure we get the choice, right? Doesn't the best team get the choice? Or like the high, yeah, the, the highest seed, I would say. The best record. I, you can't always say the best team has the best record because injuries and stuff. But uh, I feel like the highest seed gets to choose, right? I feel like um, man just like alternates AFC and NFC as like the quote unquote home team of the year. But. Um, here we are trotting out onto the field. Brandon Nash leading the boys out. Can we get yet another Super Bowl victory against Tua Tagovailoa? Now that the quarterback of the Seahawks is many years into the future. Will not be playing this one. Uh, I'm done playing Super Bowls. I think the two gave me, gave me what I was hoping for when I, you know, hopped onto the sticks and played for this team, you know, one final time. And so I I think I've had my fill. We will take a 7-3 lead and extend it out to 14-3. Going to halftime with an eight-point lead. Extend it back to two scores. Seattle wants to make this a competitive Super Bowl, though. Five point game and we hold on with one final scoring drive 28 to 23 get a competitive super bowl here just five points once again we are on top of the league hard to imagine anyone stopping us anytime soon though we do have players that are on their regression path this game will be the last one that we play in here we will do the uh we'll show the season 10 off season very briefly at this point my brain was absolutely fried so i just kind of ran through things but um nice to see another super bowl victory um, i imagine if it's ready for next one wednesday's one off wednesday you'll see the part two of this a week from today and hopefully that video can be enough to get all the way through Brandon Nash's career. We might need to even make this a part three. Um, but I would really like to not have to do that. Even if it, if it can go out to like three hours and be one video, I'd find at least one three hour video. But that's such a long video. Most of my videos I've been trying to keep between 30 and 45 minutes. I feel like my viewership is up on when I do that. This is kind of a specialty video though, you know. It's also hard to keep like long-term videos in um, to be any so, sort of short. And as we see, Crowther did get superstar dev, so you love to see that. Quincy Boston starting to regress a little bit, getting back up to a triple 99. But um, yeah, this is one of my like the first times I've ever tried to sit down and do all, a bunch of seasons all in one sitting. It is not my favorite way to play Madden, I must admit. But I think this was good practice because I want to start doing just like these one-off rebuilds of like different teams and stuff because I think it's a good way to to grow viewership on the channel. I think uh, just these rebuilds are a lot more new viewer friendly than like say episode 38 of, of a series, you know? And so I want to start doing them uh i've now realized how much time and energy it takes to make one of these so like i'm glad i'm only asking myself to do one a week that still might be too much for me i have another full-time job you know i don't do this for a living if i was doing this for a living i wouldn't be nearly 
so much of a problem. But um, Brandon Nash, once again, wins MVP, has yet to play a league in the NFL without winning the MVP award. Ron Simmons, you have to not be surprised by the fact that he won as a player of the year with his 30 touchdowns. We didn't win defensive player of the year, though. Um, didn't even have a top 10 receiver. We, we're just like so balanced. We always have like four receivers that are all good. Uh, we have the second and third best defensive linemen, though. Um, nobody from the Lampmakers. Those are majority edge rushers. Um, and yep, that will wrap up season 10. Let's quickly go through what we did in the offseason. Drafted Travis Barkley to replace. Uh, our third corner slot. We've just been starting like some noob there at corner. That's all. The, that's only I drafted. Tevin Scott was a CPU pick, so a nice pick by them. Could be the eventual third receiver once we get rid of Eddie Hazleton because of his regression. Uh, we signed him to a three-year deal. He's got two years left. Maybe we cut him, you know, when he's got one year left still. Come on, Simmons starting to see some pretty heavy regression here. So you have some points banked up to get his overall up but yeah he's starting to re reach the age where his overall is going to start going down eddie hazelton's reached that age mike pearson's reached that age timmy reed has reached that age quincy boston has reached that age i think mclean still has some good years left of him younger nash and then of course all the guys that we drafted here uh the huggins and the trents and the uh, i'm forgetting the superstar offensive lineman's name sorry bro yeah, the Huggins, the Higgins, a bunch of these guys, uh, I think, should still be good for quite some time. They'll be probably, aside from Brandon Nash and maybe George McLean, kind of the focuses of the next episode. I'll start to uh, every year look at their career stats. This episode, we just looked at their yearly stats. I'll start looking at career stats as these guys are likely to retire. I'll even start to, I'll even try my hardest to follow the careers of all the guys that have left like i'll go through and see what why costanzo was done with the commanders what all those cowboys guys have done art like the career stats of like the dbs they never really end up having like all-time great careers just the, the interceptions never really match up despite the fact that it feels like there's a lot of interceptions in this game offensive line stats are also just really like what what, what are you Measuring just like maybe how many Pro Bowls they go to. We'll, we'll make sure to track that. But um, as we near the end of this video, I hope you guys liked it. It's one that I had been anticipating. I've been really wanting to work on for a really long time. And I know it was not the best way to end what had been a really, really fun franchise with the San Antonio Express. And even though I was already planning on going in a little bit different of a direction, the fact that uh, Madden kind of just took the franchise away in general was really disappointing. Um, took a lot to make this video, so I would appreciate if you're still here. I can't imagine anyone's still two hours into this video, but if you are, please drop a like, leave a comment, whatever. I appreciate you for sticking with this video for so long. Um, as a channel that just started with this Madden it's been so awesome to see that people are starting to you know come onto the channel and enjoy it and these repeat commenters that are starting to follow all my series but that's it for this video back with a soon another one with a soon one whoa I'll be back with another one soon even my brain's fried right now and I will see you then <laughs>